Good morning. Tonight is the yard site of my uh, late father. It's the, I think, the eighth yard site, Toshinai and Dalit. And uh, many of you knew him. And should be the schus uh, of tonight's shir should be the Ilu Nishmosoi. I'd also like to focus on the the schus should also be with, with those of our community who are currently ill with uh, COVID, Rahman Litzlan. Even in a mild way, should be uh, completely re removed with no no suffering and no no symptoms, and the Niha Hashem Echo should be at a refuah shleima. Before we start this year, we uh, the, the, for people asking where the shear can be heard again. So, my son Yaakov Semach, who lives in New York, has made these various links. If you understand what these are, how these work. But they are available, the Shi'urim are uh, recorded, and the recordings are available uh, online in various forms, as you can see. Let's go to our first question. That is about Kedushas Uvolot Sihon. was mentioned in passing last week, we were talking about Zekeli on the Omru, Yomru Chulom. And by the way, I mentioned about the prompting in Uvolot Sihon. Now, everybody from Shlech. Certainly, the Minhik, the Korazel, Zevi Omar, and, the, and everyone joins the Chazan says that aloud, and everyone says to the other Kodesh, and so on uh, by, by Baruch, said they do certainly say it aloud. The Rebbe mostly was not knowing that way, and it's not only Chabad, it's also other Chsidish cries and do not make such an issue of the Kedusha in Ovalotzin. And I mentioned last week about the Zoyhar. So here, this is in the Zoyhar. Chelik Beis, Dav Kuf Chof Tevs, Ahmed Aleph, and he talks about Kedusha de Sidra. Kedusha de Sidra, that's referring to the Kedusha in Avolot Siyon. Kedain Haigav de Dagon is not the Kham Kadshi Yisrael Yatir Amaloche Eloi. Here is where I mentioned last week that here is an advantage that you didn't have over the Malochim. The first Kedusha we had in, in, in uh, Birchus Krishma, we're describing. What the Malachim are doing. The second Kedusha in Shemanesa was saying, we're saying together with them, and here it's Yid not doing on their own without the Malachim. And this is something which is bothering the Malachim. Um, and when the Yid not saying this Kedusha, the word Messiah can mean complete or the, to conceal. That the Malochim should not notice and not penalize them and should not make, make trouble for them. And here again, the, again the, the underlying part. This Kedusha should be concealed amongst us. And he mentions here also somewhere. Um, about the Loshan Arami, I don't see it right on, on, on the page right now, but um, that, that is the, uh, the explanation. Um, let's just close, scroll, scroll down. Oh, this is from the Migdash Melech. Um, Migdash Melech was, I think, from Arab Buzaglo, who has a, a, a commentary on the Zoyar. The Zoyar is saying that since we're saying the Kedusha, Loshan Targum, Mepnehamalochim, that they shouldn't be jealous of us. We are saying Kedusha each time, Yotzer and Chazor Satfil, and again Kedusha the Sidra, but the Targum, the Aramaic, is something which they despise. Therefore, by us repeating it in, in Aramaic, that uh, removes the jealousy of the Malochim and refers to where it's discussed about the idea of using Aramaic, where the Malochim um, don't like the uh, Tang language of Aramaic. Where, and this is now in Shukhanoruch, the Altarev of Shukhanoruch and Simon Kof Aleph, talking about dav davening in various languages. And people would daven him with a malach, etc. And it says at the beginning, preferably you should daven in the Shrena Kodesh, because the malochim uh, don't understand other languages, and you need a malach to uh, elevate your tefillah. Um, some daven in other languages and say that that's not a problem. Only Aramaic itself, only specifically Aramaic, which, sorry about that, because that is specifically despised the Malochim, by the Malochim, and they, uh, and they uh, 
they uh, they uh, push it away. Since it's the yurt set of my father, I just want to share with you. Just came to mind as as I was speaking now. My father apparently, this is before my days. He was a malamed. In addition to him being a shaykh, he was a malamed. And this is a letter which he received in Tovshin Tes Zayin. Chof Aleph Iyah Tovshin Tes Zayin. The letter is published in Igris, but here the Rebbe writes to him that I was pleased to read on your letter, which he had written on Yom HaBoy Hilul the Rashbi. He had written a letter on Lag Boimer on the 18th of year, and the Rebbe's letter to him is dated 21st of year, three days later. Fascinating. At any rate, the Rebbe writes to him, I'm pleased to read that you're learning with a, a, a group of children, a class of children, according to trad our tradition of Komet Aleph Or, as known the Kedusha of the letters and of the vowels, that they are Lemoshe Misenai. And as is evident in the Zohar and the Tikkun Zohar in several places, not only the, the letters and the vowels themselves, but also the names of the letters, the names of the vowels, as quoted, the names of the Nekudas are Rosh Tevis of names of Malochim. So they never mentioned to my father in this letter how even the names of the Nekudas are uh, names of Malochim. If you take Tikkuni Zohar near the beginning, he goes through the names of the Nekudas, which is a fascinating thing because the names of the Nekudas do not, are not mentioned anywhere in Shas. Uh, Tere, Comet, all of this is not mentioned anywhere in Shas. And in, in the Zoya, there's a lot of discussion about them, and what we see that it's got to do with Malochim, which are elevating. At any rate, so that comes back to our topic over here um, about there is some idea of suppressing the Kedushin of Alatsi and not to announce it too loud um, in order in, to keep the Malochim um, in a way that they shouldn't cause trouble. Let's move on. I don't understand too much about this, and therefore that's why I'm being Mikatsa. Now, someone asked me a simple Shiloh. There is uh, offered to children in schools have been offered the flu jab, and the parents have to give a consent for sign a consent form, and they do point out it is made from, I think it's pronounced porcine uh, uh, gelatin. Um, and there she's asking the mother is asking is that okay? And um, the answer is that eating is allowed to eat tray for food. The eating by definition means it goes through the throat. If it's if it comes into the body in a different form, that's not defined as eating. What you have in front of you is from the Sefer Nishmas Avroham, which is a series of four or five volumes on Shukhan Aruch, where, wherever it deals with medical stuff. So here, this is in Yeridea, it talks about Mechleshiks and Milchiks, Simon Peites, and it talks about eating through a tube, and he says if a person's eating through a tube, which is feeding directly into the stomach or through the nose, or PEG seems to be directly into the stomach, um, and he discusses are they allowed to have meat and milk together? Um, the, 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 the bottom line, it is okay, and whether it's milk and meat or even non-kosher food, he quotes, and then that, this is a long uh, part, and the end of it, he quotes the Achiezer. Achiezer is the Chubas of Reb Chaim Oze, who was Rav in Vilna, um, very, very respected and had a very good relationship with the Fredi Kareb, actually. Um, but he, um, he writes this, that the issue of stray for food is only when it comes through the throat. If it's not coming through the throat, it's not called eating. Uh, he quotes also the Egle Tal, who is the Sochachover, the Avnenezer, again, who says it has to be a combination of uh, going through the throat and going to the stomach, and he goes, he gives further references. So that that remains the halacha that it is allowed to have the you're allowed to have these these uh, flu jabs even though it's made from chaza. Now, in addition to what we've just said, I understand that the taste is uh, is not really um, not, not it's not a pleasant taste. It doesn't it doesn't come across as a food as such, and therefore, uh, even if you'd eat it, it wouldn't be an, uh, an achila. So if you think you put it through the nose, it might come into the mouth somehow. It's not a, not, a, not a proper food in any case, therefore it's not a problem as such. Now, here's an interesting, people who learn Tanya and are familiar that non-kosher animals come from Sholosh Klippis Atmeis. So how does it work that you're getting energy 
from uh, the, or getting an in, some input from a chaza, which is shalosh klipus at meis. So a horse is also shalosh klipus at meis, and you're allowed to ride a horse. You're allowed to have benefit from a horse. It's you're only not allowed to, not allowed to eat um, horse flesh. You're not allowed to eat. That's shalosh klipus at meis. But riding a horse seems to be okay. It doesn't. There, the, it seems to be klipas noiga. So the horse seems to have different aspects. Some of it is shalosh klipus at meis, and some of it is klipas noiga. So somehow we're going to have to make a more a similar but more uh, um, subtle difference. Now in tray for food itself, it depends in which way it is ingested. If it's ingested in the normal way, then that is also bideachitzonim. It is shalosh klipas at meis, which cannot be released to kedusha. And if it's ingested in any other way, as we've just seen from the poskim, then it is not also bideachitzonim, and there's a way it can be elevated. That's as much as I can tell you uh, on, on this. And let's go on. One of our regular listeners, he doesn't listen live because he's in somewhere in the Far East, but he listens uh, faithfully on a weekly basis. And he asked me some shyness about, he lives on the, uh, he has a ground floor, it seems to be quite a machnis uh, oirach. That seems to be some kind of a little shul in his house also. And he has a dining room and a back room, whatever. And then there's a veranda. And he's asking about, making brochas in one room and going to another part of the of the house to the veranda i told him if you want it to be discussed on, on panorama send me some photos which he did okay so we have some photos and if you want to uh if you know um some of those far east languages you can try to decipher the writing on top of the doorway um i wasn't able to it's nothing to do with him it's from a previous user i just that's there okay just to give you a bit of profile where it is. So what, what's the issue here? The issue is that going from one place to another is a form of hefsuk, shinui mokrim, going from one place to another does create a hefsuk. Now, sometimes going from, all right, when you go from one place to the other, we all know that you 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 start a Shabbos meal and you're invited for Sheva Brachas down the road. By a, by a neighbor, by a mishpocha. So you can go to the other place if you had that in mind. If you didn't have that in mind when you washed, when you made hamotzi, and you went out and you come back, so you've got a string attached. Since you are chayev to um, say, brocha chroina bim koyme, so therefore it's as if you've got a string attached and the hefzik is not a hefzik. So there are various forms where Shinui Mokrim does not create a hefsik. So let's see what we have over here. Okay. Here, but here the question is, is not going from room to room, is actually going outdoors and then is going to, to, to the veranda, which you can see over here. These double doors he doesn't use. So he's going out, as you can see where the motorbike is, it's coming from the right, from outside, and then he's going to the veranda. And is asking when he does that, does he have to make a new bracha? If he starts made a made bracha inside, does he have to make a new bracha when he comes to the veranda? This is his question. Now, it was just as well that he, um, you know, that we would would taking it this further, because I saw a fascinating chiddush in the Sefer Piskei Shivas, which you have now on the screen, and he says the following. There is a shit in Poskim which says that Shinui Mokoim, if it's under the same roof, and you had in mind when you made the bracha, you had in mind that you're going to go from one room to the other, so Shinui Mokoim under the same roof is not a hefsik. There is, a, that's written the way it's written in Shekhanoruch, it's the of Nisim Goen. Uh, all right. The proof is from a, going from the house to the sukkah, within a sukkah which is within the house. So going from one room to the other, does, it, it, and you had that in, 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 in mind, that's not a hefsik. The problem here is it's not indoors, it's outdoors. So this sefer comes along with a fascinating chiddush. Hiskimu poiskes maneinu. That, that which you say, that when you go from the house to the chotzer, to the from indoors to the outdoors, that shinimokim is a hefsik. That's referring to the, the Chatzar back in the day, where that was the route to go to the Rishush Harabim. And certainly they would share them with other people also. Therefore, going for the private 
to the shared area, the exposed area, that is a, a concept of Shinei Mokim, which makes a hefsik. But he says, mir peses shalono, our porches, or chotze protis, or a private garden, which is surrounded with walls from all four sides, sorry, um, that's called like another room of the house. So, so let's, let, let, let's digest what he just said here. We know that there's a, a, there's a concession in the concept of Shinin Mokim if it's under the same roof. He is taking this concession and extending it and saying, if you've got even an open air area, but because it's uh, totally enclosed and private, therefore the din of Shinin Mokim is not a problem, just like Micheder Lecheder. He gives several references. I looked up those references, not you know, not terribly convincing. I'm not not, not very confident with them. Um, let me just throw in a, a, a variation on this question. What happens if you've got two apartments in the same house, the same building, you know, a block of flats, going from one apartment to the other? It's under the same roof. Is that called shinimokim? Or do you say um, it's on the same roof, but it's 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 a different resource, a different ownership, Michlal. So amongst his references, one says by him is poshet. Reb Tzina Bashol says, as far as supposed to, he says by me is poshet. It's under the same roof. It's it's, it's not a hefsek. Then he brings another sefer, um, which says just the opposite. By me is poshet, even though it says from the um, what is Reb Shama. Um, uh, Shevet Takahasi. So he says it's two separate issues. What's the difference on the same roof? But it's two separate issues. So there's, there's, it's not such a clear cut thing. But he comes along with this chiddush, which I was, at first I was very excited to see. But when I looked up, I was a little bit disappointed. It's not such a strong thing. So if we, we would take on that mahalach, then if this area is all enclosed with a fence and it's a private area, then there's no problem of shinui makom because it's all. In, uh, in an enclosed area. But as I say, I'm not really totally um, uh, happy to rely on that. Now, we have this problem in many of our houses that we don't have a sink in the dining room. So the sink is typically in the kitchen. So what's the story? You make Kiddush and then you put down the, the, the wine and you go to the other room and you wash and then you come back. Isn't that a problem of a hefsek between Kiddush and and uh, and Hamotzi? And you have to have Kiddush b'mochim suda. So I was concerned about this, and subsequently came across this sack of the Alter Rebbe, where he says that ain't shini mochim hefsek, kosher hefsek b'suda. The whole this concept of going to out and shini mochim and being a hefsek is only if you were there for a while. Like he says, you went to shul or something. You went, you were totally distracted. But if he says, he says, aval im If it wasn't a long interval, you just went there to do something briefly, and you come straight back. That's not called a hefsek. And therefore, between kiddush and hamotzi, it's 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 a kind of it's you're going out, coming straight back in. That should not count as a hefsek because it's you're coming straight back. Now, you might argue, perhaps there he's talking about you started having a drink and now you're being interrupting between the beginning of the drink and the end of the drink. Masha'enke, you can say between Kiddush and, 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 and Hamoitzi, perhaps they're not yet one unit to say that, the, uh, that, that going in and out doesn't matter. I think it should be the same thing. And in that same if the Alter Rebbe says the following, that when we say, let, let's explain something. I said before, if you made hamoitzi and you went out, you got a string attached. And that is because you have to make baruch bim koimo. So therefore, you're going out is not a hefsek because you've got a string attached to your back. It's pulling you back. What about if you had just something like a drink? So then it's obvious she ain't on baruch bim koimo. Then shinimokim is a hefsek. So now here says the Alter Rebbe, another chiddush in the same place. Even even something like a drink of, of beer. If you sat down to, for, for a drink, a cup of coffee with someone, 
or even on, on your own, but it's a thing which to sit there, people who sit down for a cup of coffee, it's not that you're running around. It's volume which kvios from kvios. Then that's also, that's that a, a, a says that a hefzik a, arai, a brief interruption does not count as a hefzik. So that's what the Alter Rebbe says over here, which is a very helpful um, uh, you know, piece of information that, uh, that, that going in and out for just for a moment is not a hefzik. Now, coming back to our story here in the Far East. So going from one to the other, is that, is that called a brief interlude? Oh, one, one, one thing I would say is the following, that because it's in the veranda, it's under the same roof, so then we can rely back, back go back to under the same roof, we can rely that Shinni Mokim under the same roof you had in mind, that's not a hefzik. So that's for, for sure, because it's under a roof, even though it's a veranda, it's not mamish the same brickwork as, as, a, as a building, but it's an extension of the house, therefore it's not a problem of Shinni Hefzik, so long as you're still under the roof. Once you've gone into the open air, then, well, Shmipiske Tshuva says it's okay. I'm not totally convinced. Then there's another issue, another heter, to hold that the Shinya Mokim should not be a Hefzik. And that is, if Roya Es if you are in your back room and you've got a, a door to your garden and you went out into your garden, but from your garden, you can see where you were when you made your bracha. So it's Roya Es Royas Mekoyma is another bridge which holds that the interval should not in, in cut the cut through the hemshech of the brach. So Royas Mekoyma holds uh, it, it, it prevents that it being, being a hefsek. We had this discussion going back at the beginning of COVID, whether Royas Mekoyma through a window. So it says even through a window is also called Royas Mekoyma. What if the window has got glass? So Reb Chaim Falaji, who lived in Turkey and uh, going back 150 years ago or something, a bit earlier perhaps, Reb Chaim Falaji is convinced that a glass window is considered, um, is also called Royas Um I'm not totally convinced because in some, in some contexts you'll say a glass, a glass uh, it's, you may be able to see, but it's, it's a barrier. So I'm not sure whether you can extend, because by some areas you say, because you can see it, it's considered that it's in front of you. I'm not sure whether that works over here in the context of Shinimoku. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Oh, so that was then point four, we kind of morphed from, from three to four. I just want to finish off that I, when I was learning in Brunois, so I would sometimes go to uh, for for a Shabbos meal to Rabbi Yosef Goldberg was Dosha Shiva, Mishpocha, and um, he had a minhig that they would bring the children would bring him a bowl, he make kiddish, and then they brought him a bowl, a negelvasa bowl with a kvort, and he washed next to his place. He didn't want to interrupt by going from his room from the from the dining room to the kitchen, which you could not see from one to the other. So he was machmer on that. He was bichal. He was a very big machmer, but I don't think. Uh, it's a here to be machmer so far. I'm going to now look at the chat before taking the next um, slide. Okay. Before Shlema to Esther Bastoiba, Freundlich, before Shlema. The, the, the people are mentioning about the jab with the pork, pork gelatin. They do, the Muslims are. I'll mach me on this, but you know, this is ain't of ain't tuna. They don't have any the the lundus which Baruch Hashem we have. Um, someone's pointing out to me that in Igris Chelik Yudalit, page one o seven, where the Rebbe also says something about non kosher ingredients in vaccines are okay. Thank you very much for that. And now someone is writing to me that my father told me Reb Shalom Shimon said regarding medicine capsules with gelatin to wrap in a tissue. As there is no Hanoah's God, so there is no Hanoah's God. That's a different story. Let's ex let's deal with that for a moment. The the the, the capsules these uh, they are made to dissolve in them in the in the stomach. Those capsules are very often made of gelatin, uh, which is made to, now. There is one way of, of so you you you're worried about that. That's going through your throat. 
So then there might be Hanuas Goren. So Rabbi Zalman Shimon had said to wrap them in, uh, in a piece of tissue and to swallow it that way. I once spoke also to, to Rabbi Moshe Lando about this, and he said you can get something called veggie caps, which is a, uh, a, a it's, you can take the same capsule and empty it into these veggie caps, these capsules which are made from veg vegetarian uh, sources. To, or, but that, the, 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 the capsules is going through the throat. Here we're talking about a, a nasal thing, so it's two different halachas. Okay, um, right. Yes, so you're asking how is kviyas defined when we, this this chiddush of the Alter Rebbe. So here the, in Simon Reish Yud Gimel, he's talking about that being might see someone else with birchas hanayanim. If you remember the difference, oimed or yoshev or masubin, and there are some. It's a detail there in Reish Yud Gimel. Some types of foods uh, are. It's a kind of more settled kind of um, food, which you'd have in a more settled way rather. And therefore, that requires a kviyas. So that's something which are snacks, which you'll eat while you're walking around. And that is, you wouldn't be moiti someone else with birchas anenin, but something which is like a cup of coffee, you apparently, and I'm not going to, I didn't look into it now properly, but that's the discussion, the chiddush here is, even though it doesn't require brocha chreinabim koimun, so you haven't got that string attached, still, he says, because it has a degree of kviyas, then going out for a minute is not a hefsi. Okay, just Baruch Hashem, there's lots of questions coming in. Um, someone's asking to. Um, I'm not sure what that means. How are pills still made like that? As far as I know, then made, most pills are not made with gelatin. What is common is that they do have um, lactose, is quite a common ingredient. But okay, let's move on. All right, now. I'm just sharing you with you some of the uh, discussions I had during the past week. This is a copy from the sefer called Halochism in Hogi Chabad, which is a sefer put together from all those who read the Iskashras, uh, which has been coming out for the last 20 odd years. So uh, the end of it has got a Luach HaShavua with Halochas, etc., put together by Yossi uh, Ginsburg, a cousin of mine who lives in Be'er Sheva, he's a Rav in Be'er Sheva. And they wrote the following, that when it comes to Leishev Asukah, the one who makes Kiddush will say Leishev Asukah right after Kiddush. And by day, by night, it's um, followed by Shechiono, the first two nights. Oh, no, actually, no, the first night, the second night is Shechiono first. Uh, and by day even. And now making Kiddush by day, in Shechonoruch, and the Alter Rebbe Shechonoruch, in Dopperish Memalev, says, well, by day, you shouldn't make Leishev HaSukah with the um, Kiddush, you should make Leishev HaSukah on the Hamoitzi. And yet the Minhag Chabad and many other uh, circles is to say Leishev HaSukah with Kiddush. That's, that, that's, that's uh, we, we know that, well known. But what was what was surprising to me that he writes that the that's the one who makes Kiddush to say Leishev HaSukah at Kiddush. But the ones who uh, are, are not making their own Kiddush, they should make after they say after the Sehamoitzi. So you've got a family around the table in the sukkah. So they want to make leads, they, um, makes Kiddush. He says Leishev HaSukkah. And they then go and wash. And he gives them a piece of Hamoitzi. And they say Leishev HaSukkah after Hamoitzi, before eating. I was very surprised and I didn't find it, don't see any proper source for this. And, uh, you can see there's no source for this. Okay. It doesn't give a source for this thing or that Leishev HaSukkah should be said by uh, together with Hamoiti, by those who are Yoitzer from Kiddush. So I wrote to Rabbi Ginsburg, asked him, what's the reason for this? Where does it come from? So he said, he responded that the people who are Yoitzer Kiddush, they, um, they may have a little sip of the wine of Kiddush, if that, and then there's a hefsik between their Kiddush and they're going to wash and just down when they come back. So I have six. So I wrote it back to him. I said that if that's the case, even the one who makes Kiddush also has the same problem. He says he, has, he drinks little wines, a I said, no, it doesn't have to have a Revius. You can make Kiddush and have less than a Revius. So why don't, aren't you worried about him? Now, following our whole discussion, which you had just now, that whole, that whole worry of going out of the room and coming back is not a worry in any case. Um, uh, as far as an interruption, as we just uh, we just saw, uh, just in, uh, in and out to go and wash just your dime, it does not. It's not called shini mokim, which is a hefsit. So really, I, I don't see 
that as justification to say that the um, that the Musubim should make Lesha Vasuka by Hamaitzi. And so just last Sunday, we had here, uh, I asked Rabbi Ginsburg, where did he get this from? So he heard it from Rabbi Leo Landa, uh, who lives in Bnei Barak. All right, that was there in their family. But the, punctu, last Sunday, Rabbi Isaac Landa, who's the current Rav of, of Bnei Barak, I was sitting next to him by the Bar Mitzvah. And I asked him about it. He says, Poshet, it's just that like many women are, are accustomed to make their own bracha hamoitzi. So the same thing, they want to make their own leisha not because uh, they're not, not because they're not yoitsa or hefsa, just because they want to make it. So it's really, it's quite optional. And that's what I will remain with, that for women or other man, family members or yoitsa from Kiddush to make their own leisha is is, is, is is optional. And whichever way you do is fine. Like like the hamoitzi, if you want to be yoitsa hamoitzi, you can be yoitsa from, from the, the one who makes, um, Amoitsi from the Balabais. You want to make your own Amoitsi as you wish. Let's take a look at a couple of points which people have written in. Um, so someone's pointing out about the the, the, <clears throat> the nasal thing. It goes to the throat and can come back into the mouth. That's why I pointed out. Even if it does, um, even if it does, it's it's um, it's a pogum. It's not a normal food, and therefore it's not a problem. Right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Oh, so here we have something about a, a bris. No. Someone's asking me to tell a story about my father, Allah Shalom. So now we're talking about the bris. So it reminds me, it was one of, well, that was his, he was, a, he was a quiet person, but this is one, one place where he was in the public eye, was being a, a moyal and he used to go. Uh, so he had a bunch of uh, mice. He went to a, uh, a family, an uh, Israeli couple, and after the bris, so uh, he's holding a cup of wine. The Koresh may be a smoil. Nimrod. So, Nimrod, uh, <laughs> Nimrod was, was a wicked person. Nimrod Hayagi Bochayel. He was a strong man. Um, okay, so he says, perhaps let's give him two names. So they made a combination, Nimrod Avraham. <laughs> it was an interesting combination. Uh, uh, several months later, he met them in the street somewhere. He met them on another, another occasion. And he asked them how the baby, you know, what they call him, they call him Avraham. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's actually someone, you know, about Shuvink for Chabad. His name is Nimrod. He's from a uh, non from background. And he asked the Rebbe whether he should change his name. The Rebbe told him to keep it. So, okay, fine. So you can have a Nimrod, you can be married against your Yetzirah. Um, okay. So now we have that, this, the question like this. Someone sends me a question the following. In the Svardish community, they have a custom by the Bris. They say, like, Why do the Svardim have Ula Mitzvahs, Villa Mitzvahs? And we don't. So the first thing I said is simple that uh, we're following the Nusach HaGemara. Mm -hmm. This is the notion of the Brisa, that the one who makes the bris, that the, one, the Moyal says Allah Milo, the father says Allah Nisim Bibrisa Shal Avraham Avinu, and the people who are present answer, well, the Rebbe says they should answer Amen, don't forget, say answer Amen. And then they ask, Amen, Kashem Shanich Nusach Briz, Kachi Yikon, it's a Torah of a Masim Torah. So the, the simple answer is that is in the Gemara. But that's not that's a, a bit a bit shallow because the Sfardim also learn the same Gemara, and they somehow got the uh, this extra piece in. And um, what you have on the left of your of your screen is from the Seder of Amram. Seder of Amram is going back perhaps twelve hundred years. I'm not sure exactly. That region is one from the Goinim, and this is the earliest Seder which we have. And he has So you notice the difference. He has lechupa or lemitzvus, and uh, the svardim today have lemitzvus or lechupa. So briefly, the the um, pashtus. What's going on here is lemitzvus means the bar mitzvah. The Torah, Torah is, is bringing it to cheder to start learning Torah. The mitzvahs would be bar, bar, bar mitzvah, the chuppah is the chasna, the mas and toivim. There were places where they would even make him a wedding, they would marry off someone before the before bar mitzvah. 
it's well known that Bila Paracha was known as the as the Chalamoyed because he was married off before uh, before his bar mitzvah. So he wasn't wearing tefillin and he was wearing a talus. So when do you wear a, a talus without tefillin on a weekday? Uh, so it's He was known as a Chalamoyed. So the the seder of Rav Amram Goen of the Torah Luchupa or the mitzvahs from Masim Torah. This, but that is certainly not so common now generally, and therefore we have the Sfardish and Usuch, the Torah, the mitzvahs, the Luchupa, the Masim Torah. At first, it's Torah, then the mitzvahs, and then after, Yud Ches Luchupa, and then Masim Torah. Why? But the, if they are including the mitzvahs, why does the Gemara not have it? And why does the Nusach Ashkenaz not have it? Now, I want to point out another important detail. What happened over here? The father has just said a bracha. I have a mitzvah to bring my son into the covenant of Avraham Avinu. The present company respond just like he's he, he's coming to Briz, so too you should bring him in to Torah of Amazon Torah. Now, if you see the Nusach of the Rav Amram is Kashem Shehichinas Torah, and he saw so, Kain Tachniseyu. And the Sfardim also are talking in the second person. Kashem Shehichnastoi casts his Kalachnisoi. The Nusach Hagemore is saying Kashem Shehichnos. He's saying in the third person, just like this child has entered the bris, so he should and he should enter. Why are they doing it in the third person, not giving the bracha to the father? So there are different gestures, and the Shach says, the Shach in, in Shuchanoch says that because sometimes there's a, by a bris, there's no father there for whatever reason. And there you can't say Kashem Shehichnastoi because it's it's not him, and therefore was changed to Kashem Shehnichnos, and in order not to differentiate whether the father is there or not, so it became standardized to talk about in the third person Kashem Shehnichnos. Be that as it may, but the original bracha is actually to the father Kashem, just like you've brought him into. So now we know there's a Mishnah, a Brisa, sorry. Uh, in Kedushin, which talks about the duties of a father vis-a-vis -a, -vis a child. So it says a father has a duty to give the son a bris, the father has a chiv to teach the son Torah, and the father has a chiv to, to marry off the son. So that's a kashem shen chichnastu le bris, just like you brought him to stage one. This mitzvah, you should also be zoicha. Now, when it comes to mitzvahs, what does it mean? When, a, when the boy becomes, what does it mean, chichnastu le mitzvahs? What does it mean? When the child becomes bar mitzvah, it means the child is a chiyuv. Doesn't it's not the father who's bringing him into anything. At that point, the child is a chiyuv bar mitzvah, but not that the father has a, a chiyuv. Now, on the contrary, he actually says shepturani. What then does it mean, though? Ulamasim toivim. What does it mean, ulamasim toivim? There's, there's the brushim and uh, the sikh of the Rebbe also in Tovshin Yodal and everything about this. But on a, on, on, a, on a simple level, going back to the bris, the father has a chiyuv to give us on a bris to teach him Torah. Also have to teach him how to swim, by the way, but that's not uh, relevant at this moment. To teach it to marry in Lassia Isha, Ulamde Umnus. He has to teach his son a, a, a profession. He should be able to earn. Otherwise, if a person doesn't have a profession, he becomes a crook. That says in the Gemara, he becomes a molasses as Ambrius. He has to have he has to have what to live on. If he doesn't have a a, 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 a an honest income, it will be a dishonest income. So that's the Lamasum to even. So that's the that's what Kishem Shenichnas or Shem Chichnaster, the father should be Zoicha to bring his son also to establish him, give him the, the, to be able to have an, an honest parnas. Let's go on. Someone asked the question that what happens if people are sitting on Friday? Sounds like quite a relaxed situation. Bichlal, Friday is a time of tension. So in the Gemara, it's a time where people are running out of Shabbos and they bash into the one or the one the other. On Friday, it's a time where it's a, it's a time of, of, of people are rushing. But it looks like these people are probably in a hotel somewhere or some uh, guest in someone else's house. And they're sitting and chatting or they're having a fabrengen, going into Shabbos. At what point do they have to stop this uh, nibbling and make Kiddush? Does it, so he's asking, is the cutoff point Shkia or Nacht. So let's read here from Shukhan Aruch. So where is it in Shukhan Aruch? Um, Reish Ein Aleph, the beginning of Hechaz Kiddush. Osru chachomim lit oim 
כלום, אפילו מים, מי שהגיע זמן הקידש עד שיהיה קדש. If you were, whatever you're doing, but you're not allowed to even have a drink of water and certainly not to eat other foods, once at the time of Kiddush, until you'd actually make Kiddush. Dahainu, mishihigiyah bein ha-shmoshes, sinishkadish ha-yom esopi. Once you pass Shkia, and you're into what's called twilight, bein ha-shmoshes in Aloha language, at that point, you're not allowed to eat further or drink further um, unless you make Kiddush. And if you dive in Ma'ariv early, so you've made the day begin earlier, so then you'd have to uh, stop and make Kiddush. We all know this, the concept of Poyos Map and Mekadish, that's more in the context where they had washed for a meal and they were bringing, um, they'd had a meal, and then they would stop and make Kiddush and continue with Hamoitzi, that's with Lecha Mishneh. But here I'm talking about in a, in a more casual setting. They're sitting there and chatting and they're bringing and a bit of food at the table. As soon as it comes to Shkia, they're going to have to stop and make Kiddush. Now, what's the problem? If they're sitting by the table, there's plenty of mashka at the table. Why not make Kiddush on the mashka? If it wasn't enough till now, so okay, fine. So now we'll have a bit more mashka. And, um, so the mice is as I that there's a difference. There's a concept of making Kiddush on Hamar Medino. Let's translate the words Hamar Medino. Hamar is the Aramaic word for wine. It's the local wine equivalent. There's not so much wine growing in that region. There is another type of drink, which is a chosh of a drink. And that is accepted as an alternative for wine, for Kiddush, Havdolah, etc. Now, there is actually a debate. Does it have to be alcoholic or not? Can it, can a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, does that count for, um, for Hamar Medina? So this is a discussion in Poskim. But what I can just tell you, I remember in the Seder Sefer, Yemei Bereshis, uh, which is a description of the first year of the Rebbe's Nasiyas, approximately. And it has there an incident about a, a, one of the uh, Tmimim, one of the Bokhrim, who was uh, drafted to go to Japan or Korea or something, one of uh, Vietnam, I don't remember which exactly, one of, one of the, in the Far East. And the Rebbe told him he should make Havdola on a cup of coffee. So you have a, a smach that we are knowing that you can, if necessary, make a kavadol and a cup of coffee. Now, so of course, when we have wine, we make kiddush and wine, both by day and by night. But what happens if you don't have wine? So the here, this is where it's, on, on, and where it's highlighted. There's a difference between by night and by day. Let's explain. By night, you have the chalice and uh, by day also you have the chalas. By night the kiddush is a longer kiddush. It's a whole long brocha. If you'll make kiddush on a loaf of bread on the on a lechem mishne, it will be it will sound like kiddush because you're making the same nusach a whole long nusach. If you do the same by day, you're going to start your meal with making what hamoitzim lechem in oretz on on two chalas. It doesn't sound like Kiddush. It just sounds like every day. It's not. It's no 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 Kiddush. There's nothing unusual, like any like like lunch and any of any other day. And therefore, this is where we see the difference. If there's a shortage of wine, you don't have wine available by night. You'd make Kiddush on the lechem. By day, you should make Kiddush on Hamar Medina. Now he says in the next line because if you just make by day, if you make on on the on the pass, then it won't be noticeable that this is Kiddush because it's just a bracha bechas But by night, he says you should make you should make Kiddush not on the on the Hamar Medina. You should because not everyone agrees with the concept of Hamar Medina, and therefore by night you should make Kiddush on the lechem. So coming back to this fabrengin, making Kiddush on um, on another glass of mashke is not recommended, in addition to all other reasons. But here we just see the halacha is that. Hamar Medina is a, is a solution for by day, it's not a solution for Kiddush by night. Now, then he asks another question. You see in Polish Shechsidim, and this is question eight on our, on our list, you see in Polish Shechsidim making Kiddush Shabbos by day on a small shot glass, a small... Uh, so this is a well-known Polish Shemini. And what they say, they're claiming that a is is the normal amount that you have Oh, 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 it's a normal amount for, of intake of wine, but something like uh, like alcohol, like vodka or uh, whiskey or 
whatever Shlivovitz, whatever it may be, it's not normal to have a, a, a revius of that. And what is lacking in quantity is made up with quality. So this is what you have here in front of you is a quote from from the Ketos uh, HaShulchan, Rabbi Chaim Noah. So he gives a reference to the Shari Tshuva, which is a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, that, that there are those who say that if you make Kiddush on Yash, Yash is an abbreviation of Yain Sorov, an alcohol. So he says there that you should drink a cheekful like you make, as if you made Kiddush on a wine. And also the cup for Kiddush has to contain a revius. However, Rabbi Shut Maharsham, so who is the Marsham? Reb Shal Mordechai Cohen Shvadron. He was uh, known as the Berzhanerov, one of the mamish, the most uh, prominent poskim in his day. In his day, so the uh, Berzhanerov lived about 150 years ago, perhaps a bit, uh, a bit, a bit less. So in Galicia, I believe. So the Berzhan, the, the Marsham writes from and brings various sources that they would make Kiddush on Shabbos morning. Shabbos day, they would make on a small cup of, of, uh, of alcohol. Apparently, uh, when I saw one of the sources, the Divri Chaim, the Tzanzarov, also had this minig. A lot of the Polish uh, uh, Guta Yidin had this minig of making Kiddush by day on a uh, on, on brown pin, on, on uh, alcohol, and they wouldn't have a large amount, they would just have a little amount. And that's, so this is, this is a widespread Polish minig. And then Reb Chaim Ra'anoi writes, a poshut she'ein lismech al zeh. Obviously, one shouldn't rely on this. Ela b'di'i efshle klal l'kadash al revius v'lishtes m'leil lugmo. You shouldn't rely on this unless you're really not able to have a revius and drink a cheekful. So that is actually, so this business of using a shot glass for Kiddush is not, accept, is, is not uh, followed in Lubavitch. And... and uh, those who do make Kiddush and Mashke for whatever need, in, in a reason, so they would have a Rav Kos, or sorry, a Rav Revius of, of whatever they're drinking. Um, but there are other, other communities this is accepted. Revius or Rav Revius? Right. Um, I'm seeing here, Dov Klein, I think that is, is saying it's not practical. I'm going back to Leisha Basuka. Not practical to say Leisha Basuka afterwards. Um, the family would have to have in mind not to be included in the host bracha. And some guests also don't know the bracha. Of course, the simpler thing is that they should be yotze. And thank you for reminding, bringing me back to that. I've also got a problem that the first night, the first night, there's a seder in the Gemara, which says you masadron al hakois, leishiv vasukya and shechiyonu masadron al hakois. So if you're going to say that um, that they're not going to have from the of the of the Mikadash. So they're going to have it um, later, yeah? So they're not going to have the Shechionu. First of all, it's not Masadun and Alakoy, they're missing out on that direct of the Gemara. But also, they are having the Shechionu. Where do, where do they have a Shechionu, the mitzvah of, 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 of Leisha Vasukha? In other words, Erev Yomtev, the ladies' bench licht, if they bench licht in the Sukha even, if they said Shechionu, but that's not on the mitzvah of Leisha Vasukha. They made a Shechionu on the Chag. On the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah, they're missing out. The of, of, of uh, the, the shechionu should be following after the birchas mitzvah. So I'm not so uh, keen. So someone is asking an unrelated question, or kind of. Can you fill up a becha with water when there is already a revius, or should one fill, or should one not have a full cup? No. So you're asking a question. No. When you, for some reason, you don't have enough wine to fill the cup to the brim. What's better to top it up with a bit of water, or should you um, have it not not full to the brim? What I've what I've read about the I'm talking about um, Kedem particularly, they claim that they do not add um, substantial amounts of water, and therefore, if it's if it's not, uh, a regular wine, a reasonable amount of alcohol uh, content. I don't see a problem of adding a bit of water. To add a lot of water is not okay, but a little bit of water, I think that would be correct. It would be okay. Um, when I was in Russia um, in 91, and so we had, I didn't have that much wine with me for Kiddush, et cetera, for Kiddush and Abdullah or whatever. And I had a big cup. So I wanted, this is a simple way of, of topping it up. You put in a couple of cherry tomatoes into the cup and then it reaches, then it fills to the top. 
I didn't have cherry tomatoes. So instead I was popping in sugar lumps. <laughs> I didn't realize until afterwards that sugar lumps don't, don't have much bulk because they're so absorbent. They kept just, just dissolving and sinking to the bottom. We're just 15 sugar lumps perhaps uh, till, till it reached the, till the top. Okay, but the cherry tomatoes, or if you like the combination of some pickles inside your wine, it will work uh, to raise the uh, level. Okay. Dan Raskin, sorry, you just right. mentioned- uh, Here is a very mm -hmm. interesting question. And that is that as a, a young man, one of our uh, dedicated shluchim, and he goes to old age homes regularly. And before COVID, he would put on filling with people. And some of the people are more with it, some are less with it. But they put on film with them. And if they weren't able to put on film or whatever, so he would just put, take his yarmulke, put it on their head, and say Shema Yisrael. And then even in their... Uh, state they would sometimes be able to say with him Shema Yisrael at least uh, mitzvah saying Shema Ach Hashem. because of Covid because there's this fear the directives are is now that he mustn't have any direct contact and they're sitting there in the old age home sitting there bareheaded can he say Shema with a person who's bareheaded because he can't take a yarmulke I said take some tissues and offer them, you know, put a tissue on their head, or they should offer them, yeah. If, if, so that is that is this, I think, a recommended thing. But what, what's the halacha? Is saying a bracha or saying shema bareheaded? Is that a mitzvah or is it a violation? So we have here. Um, this is the Masecha Soifrim, which is printed in the back of the Gemara Vedazara. It's the beginning, uh, near the beginning, and he talks here about. Moshe, a person who's bareheaded. So the first opinion it says that it's okay if he would be even be poyos al shema. But yes, oimrim that if he's got torn clothes, he can be poyos al shema. Avaloi berisha megula, einer ashoy, and he's not allowed to mention Hashem's name bareheaded. So here we have two opinions, and um, so now well, here we have now in Shulchan Aruch. This is Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch and Simon Tzadik Aleph. But he says, he takes a stricter position that you're not allowed to mention Hashem's name bareheaded. And some say you should be moiche, but people should enter the shul bareheaded. And then, midas chasidus, you shouldn't go bareheaded anywhere, dal damas, as mentioned in Simon Beis. What happened if a person did say a bracha bareheaded? Does he have to repeat the bracha? So the, what, what I see malakht in Bediyeved, he would not have to repeat the bracha. So Bediyeved, he's, he's done a bracha. The person, let's say, was a little bit, uh, didn't realize his yarmulke had fallen off, his middle of Shrenestra, and then afterwards he realized. So, but he ever, he would not have to repeat the bracha. And possibly because of his opinion in this Masech from that he is allowed to say a bracha bareheaded. So, be the, so the, but he ever, that's okay. So, Bob, 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 coming back to this question, of course, try to give them a tissue to put on their head. Sleeve on the head is obviously, is, 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 it works. Even putting the hand on the head, if they are able to do that, but if if that push comes to shove and this, they uh, they're totally unable even to do that, so Bediyeved and Bashar Satcha can't usually kind of share the same footing. It would be it would be a mitzvah even if they are bareheaded. Uh, I'm saying that with uh, not so comfortable about it. Um, just I I, uh, I shared this on Friday night. We made a mini shear after Mairiv. And I shared this uh, discussion, and it came up in discussion what the Alter Rebbe talks about um, that it's to to um, to be bareheaded is chukas hagoy. When a goy comes into a room, he removes his hat. And in English society, I believe it's quite insulting to sit inside someone's house with your with your hat on. You'd have to take off your hat. And that's that's respect for the place. And so that makes it into chukas hagoy uh, to take to, to bear your head. But why is it chukas hagoy? Some poskus say that chukas hagoy is only when it's got a religious association. When a goy comes into the house and bears his head, is that a religious act or is it just etiquette? So here's something which you can find very interesting. In Stechemed, he says the following: A goy comes into the house, he bears his head to say that when I was a baby. I had some schmutzige water spritz on my head. He'd gone through a baptism. And that's why he bears his head, to remind the fact that there is a, 
Gitraya Yoshkemensh. And therefore it does have the bearing of the head is actually a religious act. That's where that's where it comes from in the in the you know, Christian culture. And for that reason, for a year to bear his head is, is an union of, of uh, going bechukas hagoy. Okay, let's go on. Oh, this I got Thursday night. I, someone calls me up. And last week, Cedra, if you remember, Malki Tzedek Melech Sholem, Hevi Im Hoitzi Lechem Oyoyin, he greets Avram after the battle. And he, he Mal, who's Malki Tzedek? So Rashi says it's shame Ben. Um, He's, it's a shame, the son of Noach. So he's got now a name, Malki Tzedek, and he was the king of Yerushalayim. Sholem refers to Shalim. So in this Sefer Torah, the word Malki Tzedek, the two words, all Malki Tzedek, were written as one word. So now he's asking, what's the story? Is the Sefer Torah kosher or not? So you've got, it's a name of a person, Malki Tzedek. Now you have a name, Ben Sion. It's Ben Tzion, it's two words, yeah, but it's, is it one word? Is it written one word or two words? And this is a, a, a recurring question, in fact, words which are made up of two words, names made up of two words, like Kador Lo Eimer. Now, Kador Lo Eimer is made up of two words. Kador is like a ball. Lo Eimer means like a sheave of corn. He was, apparently, that's a story in the entire unison, he was fat, round, like a ball. Kador, Kador Lo Eimer, like he was a bit like Mr. Roundy, if you remember him in the, was it in Naughty Books? Um, Mr. Roundy? Yeah. Um, call upon him, he gives us the Yanka so from for guest position. I call upon him, so um, Malki Tzedek. So, on in the Chumash, you've got what's called Mesoira, and it, this is like a kind of code on the margin of the Chumash. There's a Mesoira Gdola, Mesoira Ketano, but it's and it's very, very brief. So, in the Mesoira, on the margin of the Chumash, it says all Malki, Lamed stands for lesser, there's no other such word in Tanakh. Vechad, there is one else. There was once, it comes Malki. Not Umalki, but there is once in Tanakh, Malki. Um, and that is in Tilim, in Kuf Dalid, I think. Uh, Aldivrosi Malki Tzedek. Is it Kuf Dalid? No, sorry, it's Kuf Yud. Uh, Mal Aldivrosi Malki Tzedek. Okay. So, meanwhile, we have the Masoira says that this, that it, sorry about that. The Masoira says, well, who base Milois? It's two words. And it should be, I don't know how you read that. It means it's meant to be read on one line. Le Poyol, this is this is what he says here. It's 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 um it's two, it's written as two words. Now the master or the most one of the most prominent midaktikim of of the um, of, of the Tanakh is the Minchas Shai. So this is what you have in front of you on the middle section is from Minchas Shai. Malki Tzedek. So first he says, I found in one place in a Sefer Torah Muga that the it was not Shek Sefer Torah. It's been Malki Tzedek is one word. Over Tikkun Rabbeinu Tam. However, in Rabbeinu Tam's Tikkun, so he says it's two words, and it has to be in the one line. And he says Nuschas Fardis. It's meant to be two line, uh, two words. Um. And he says, you have like a name, Tzofnas Paneach, which is two names. It, 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 it's, a, it's a name for Yosef. It's made up of two words. And then he says, Rameh. Rameh is Rameh HaLevi Abu Lefia, one of the uh, later Rishonim. says, he brings two opinions, and he doesn't decide which one. So now, um, he says now, Michas Shai, I think it was Noretzi, he says, what we pass him. So he says, when Li Nira, we should follow the Masoiris, that it is, um, that it's, that's two words. Because the, the Milchas Shai says, because the Masoiris connects Malki Tzedek in Parshas Lech Lecha with Malki Tzedek in Tilim Kufyud. And in Chazal, we see that Malki Tzedek in both places is associated with Shem Ben Noyach. It's the same person. It's called Malki Tzedek and it's written in two words. And so just to go to the bottom of this quote, there's no dispute about the Malki Tzedek and Tilim as being written as two words. That for Jeff will reflect back to the Malki Tzedek in Parshas Lechacha to read it, to, it should be written Dafka in two words. And so too, the Sefer Yoshon, he sees Malki Tzedek is, it should be, it shouldn't be on two lines. When you've got a name, 
made up of two words, it shouldn't be made on two lines. Anyone who's writing Ksubis or Masada Kedushin, whatever, they have a name Shnir Zalman. So you don't, don't write Shnir Zalman, Shnir in one line and Zalman on the next line. We look at Tchila, make a point of the um, two parts of the name should be on the one line. And certainly if it's a name like Ben Sion, which some say it has, it has to be written Mamish as one word, that you mustn't divide into two lines, that would make the uh, document possible. That is all, that's the Minchas Shai. Then we've got the Kamarna Chumash. And he yeah. writes, the Kamarna lived um, about 150, 180 years ago. He writes, I will go. It's one word. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a gap. And certainly it shouldn't be on two lines. So here, you got these, oh, sorry about that. Um, so what re what remains is what I told him that you see again um, this is in Tilim and they, here's the Masoira in Tilim that it's Malki said it's two words but I in Minchas Shai in Parshas Lechelcho that there there's a discussion and Lepoyel there's a sefer called Kesas Hasoifer one of the classics for him on uh, on Sofras written by the author of the Kitzur Shachanor Hashem Gransfried so my Tivan Brun mentioned me this morning that the, he also says it should be written in two words so therefore the Sefer Torah should be corrected it should be made into two words however until it is corrected it looks like there is a yes on to be able to continue reading um someone's asking when you're writing to the rebbe should you not break a name over two lines okay that's uh ashaila uh, mashpia but uh, when you look at you when you write uh, in a in a in a document as in a star it should be in, kept into one line. All right. Uh, as I'm re repeating what was mentioned at the beginning of the shear, that uh, the shear is available online in various forums. And uh, so everyone wants to hear a recording. So it is available. Apparently, you can search and find it that way. Okay. Wish you all a good work and we should meet in good health. Kaltov. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wishing you a Rishas Yomim. And the Shama should have an earlier.